Now I've got a list here. For many of you, you'd probably do this using a table. There is a video I've got for creating tables, so you can do that. But for this one, I use tabs. And I did a number of things here. One, I have this lined up so that as I type, you'll see it appears from the right. Oops, too many. And I did that using a tab. And over here, I did this here using a tab as well with a decimal leader. And it's also centered around that tab around the decimal place. So how do you go about doing that? Well, I've got my ruler here and this is going to be the key to it. And you'll see in here it's actually indicating a little decimal tab there. If I click here, you'll see it's got a right aligned tab. So I'm just going to create a new one and start this from scratch. So if you're familiar with tabs or if you haven't used them before, there is the tab key on the keyboard. And you'll see that every time I tab, it moves a set distance across. However, I can set my own tabs here, and there are different tabs. And to add one to the top here, and I want a right aligned tab. A normal tab, if I just tab and start typing, is a left aligned tab. So let me just go back to the beginning here. This is your ruler. Okay, so if you can't see it, you just need to click on view and choose ruler. You'll see there's a tick here indicating it's appearing. I've got rid of it now. If I go back to here, it reappears. And this is by far the easiest way to do it. Across to the left here, you'll see this little box. It's got a little line there, but it normally has, by default, that little, what looks like little L, which is actually for left aligned, left tab. You can see it says left tab right there. So if I wanted to put a left tab in, I could just drop one in here. What that then does is it overrides all the built-in tabs that I showed you when I now tab across to here. So this is really useful for lining things up. I'm just going to get rid of that. All I have to do is click and drag to remove it off and it's gone. So I want to put a right tab there. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I click here. That's a centered tab. That's a right tab. And if I just click here, I now have a right tab there. So let me just put that in. I'm not worrying about any formatting. And you'll see when I press tab now, two thousand and nine. Okay, so I'm going to go down some lines, and it will remember until I make a change that the, that is going to do the same on all of these lines. If I change it now to something else, it'll remember it from there on. But everything above will still be the same. But you can change it. If I had decided over here that I wanted to change that tab and move it across, I just simply click and drag it across. I'm going to remove it from here and I'm just going to add in a decimal tab, which I do by clicking on that tab there. So that looks about the right place there. So let me just enter some in items into my shopping list. So if I add computer here and I tab across, you'll see that as I start typing, there is my decimal tab. You can see it lines up there. So if I type in 400, press the full stop for the decimal place and then zeros, you see how it's lined it up around that decimal place. Now the one thing I do want to do here is I can actually put in some dots going across from computer to 400 and that's what's known as a leader. So what I do is I double click on my tab here brings up my tabs dialog box. This is my tab. You can have more tabs. You can use quite a lot of tabs actually if you're lining up a whole load of columns. But I've just got the one tab in here. I'm going to click on this here at 10.48 centimeters. I could actually change the actual value here so I could get it precisely at say 10 or 10 and a half. But I'm not worried about that because you could simply just type that in. You'll see the alignment here is decimal. And you'll see it's got left, centre, right, decimal, and bar. Bar, which I'll show you in just a second, doesn't actually work as a tab as such, but actually very useful for lining things up. Down the bottom here, you'll see the leader. There is none. If I choose this option here, you'll see I could have had dots, dashes, and like an underline. So if I click on OK, it's automatically put it in. Let me do this again. So if I put in 300, you see it's putting in the leader and still lining things up around that decimal place. So I could get an external hard drive. 
and then a total which comes to 790. So as I said, I could put more tabs in, so I could change that. This is the bar tab here. If I put that in, say here, you'll see it just puts a vertical line, even before I've even tabbed. So if I go on to the next line, it puts it in. So it's good for having lines going down the page. I could have more. This is putting in from where I left off. Okay, so that's actually using that. So you can see I can actually add more than one tab in here, so I can actually add more there. So I could have a tab here and a tab here, and then I could tab, tab, and then you can see what it's doing. And if I want to get rid of any of them, I can just simply click and drag to remove them. Now, just one other thing I want to show you. If I want to move these decimals across, I do need to highlight all the lines that already have it on there, and then I can move it across like that. So moving one would have just moved just the one. So I'm just going to undo that. So that is a quick look at using tabs in Word. Now, this is Word 2003. You can do this exactly the same in 2007 and 10. So let me just show you quickly. If I open up 2010, by default on mine here, it doesn't have the ruler. And I've seen that on a lot of them. The ruler isn't switched on. What you need to do is click on the View tab, and then you'll see that there's an option there to switch the ruler on. So that is using tabs in Word.